Japan entered the Second World War with the most diverse submarine fleet of any nation. Some subs were capable of the fastest underwater speeds and were armed with the best torpedoes. Despite this, they actually achieved very little during the war. There was, however, one notable exception. The Imperial Japanese Navy, or the IJN, deployed midget submarines, purpose-built supply subs, and long-range fleet subs capable of carrying planes. 65 of these could exceed 20,000 miles at 10 knots, something the Allies could not match. Their 78 midget subs were able to reach 18.5 to 19 knots underwater, making them faster than even the famed German Type 21 at 17.5 knots. Then there were their torpedoes. The Type 95 torpedo used pure oxygen for burning kerosene, unlike the compressed air and alcohol system used by others. This gave Japanese torpedoes three times more range, reducing their wake to make them harder to detect and avoid. Finally, there were their explosive systems such as the Type 97, which used a mixture of 60% TNT and 40% hexanitrodiphenylamine, making them even deadlier. As they used simple contact exploders on their torpedoes, they were far more reliable than their American counterparts, which sometimes would not even explode when they hit their targets. This would be a major problem for the Americans early in the Pacific War. The IJN's weakness lay not in their submarines, but it lay in their military strategy. Japan won the Battle of Tsushima, part of the Russo-Japanese War in 1905. Russia's defeat allowed Japan to begin its occupation of China's Manchukuo region virtually unchallenged. From that point on, the IJN was convinced that a single decisive battle was the way to go, even making it their official doctrine. This doctrine would come into play time and time again, such as at places as the Battle of Midway. During the Second World War, therefore, they focused on enemy warships which were faster, better defended, and more maneuverable. While they did destroy some merchant ships, this was not their primary focus. Japan entered the Second World War with 63 ocean-going subs and built another 111. Unfortunately, because their main targets were warships, they lost 128 of those subs, about three-quarters of what they had built. There was also the matter of waste. Japan couldn't match the resources or level of industry available to the Allies. During the Solomons and Guadalcanal campaigns, their submarines would sometimes cruise for over a month before finding the enemy, thereby decreasing morale and imbuing the crews with a sense of shame. Finally, there was the fact that Allied abilities to detect and destroy submarines drastically improved as the war progressed. For many, however, such advances came too late. I-19 was a Type B-1 submarine. It measured 357 feet in length, 31 feet at the beam, and 16.9 feet at its draught. With its two diesel 12,400 horsepower engines and 2,000 horsepower electric motors, it could reach speeds of 23.5 knots on the surface and 8 knots underwater with a range of 14,000 nautical miles at 16 knots. It was also armed with 6 by 533 millimeter forward torpedo tubes, 17 torpedoes, and a 1 by 14 centimeter 411th year type naval gun. Capable of carrying a one Yokosuka E-14Y float plane, the sub had a crew of 94 men. I-19 was actually present at the attack on Pearl Harbor, providing support to those doing the bombing. It tried to sink the Panama Express, a Norwegian merchant ship, on December 21, 1941. Fortunately, the ship would get away. A second attack the following night on the HM Story also failed, as did a third on the Barbera Olsen on December 24. The crew of I-19 was dejected until they found the Absaroka later that day. They would fire two torpedoes. The first would miss, but the second would hit its mark. Before they could do more, however, U.S. Army bombers arrived, forcing the I-19 to retreat. On March 4, 1942, I-19 took part in the second attack on Pearl Harbor. Its mission was to disrupt the ongoing repair and salvage operations and to support further attacks on the U.S. mainland in Texas and California. I-19 lay at the French frigate Shoals, Hawaii, ready to do its part. As with the first bombing, American codebreakers had intercepted and correctly interpreted the Japanese plans. Although these plans were once again ignored by their superiors, the Japanese operation failed for various reasons. 
On May 26th, I-19 was off Nikolsky Bay near Bogoslav Island, Alaska, ready to launch its float plane to search for U.S. military installations when the Americans found it. The sub would dive so quickly that its plane was destroyed. I-19 made up for everything, though, on September 15th, 1942. Under the command of Narahara Shogo, it was on a routine patrol south of the Solomon Islands during the Guadalcanal campaign when it entered naval legend. The U.S. Task Forces 17 and 18 were on their way to Guadalcanal, escorting a fleet carrying the 7th Marine Regiment reinforcements. Among these were the USS Wasp, the USS Carolina, and the USS O'Brien. The Wasp was some 170 miles southeast of San Cristobal Island refueling her planes and being rearmed for anti-submarine patrol operations. At around 12 p.m., it launched F-4F Wildcats to intercept a Japanese four-engine flying boat, which would be obliterated some 15 minutes later. At 2.20 p.m., it launched 26 planes and received 11 more that had been on reconnaissance missions when the Japanese had their revenge. Four minutes later, the I-19 fired six Type 95 torpedoes. The Wasp lookout saw three approaching the starboard or the right beam. The ship turned, but it was too late. Three torpedoes hit, knocking out her power. She was on fire in three minutes, forcing the crew to abandon ship. The other three torpedoes went on. One hit the Carolina on her port side, punching a hole some 32 feet by 18 inches wide and killing five sailors. Despite this, the ship would get away. The O'Brien was also lucky, initially. The crew spotted the smoke from the Wasp at 2.42 p.m., so it turned a hard right. Two minutes later, the torpedo missed. They were still watching it move off with a sigh of relief when the six torpedoes struck her port bow. The damage seemed superficial at first, allowing the O'Brien to reach Espirito Santo Melanesia for repairs. On October 19th, however, her bottom gave out due to the structural weakness caused by the impact, forcing the crew to bail. With a single salvo of six torpedoes, the I-19 almost sank three American ships, including an aircraft carrier, and killing 198 men. She would go on to sink two more ships and damage another in 1943, before she was sunk by the USS Radford west of Macon Island on November 25, 1943. There would be no survivors. Thanks for watching. Remember to like the video and subscribe for more content.